All right, today I'd like to show you uh, and do a review and an unboxing of my software defined radio, which is this DVB-T uh, unit USB device, which I have a, an adapter that can connect to the coaxial antenna output. And I'm gonna test it. So basically what this will do, this device will do, it can help you do with this device, a scanner, a radio scanner. Um, the only thing is that in the software, I haven't figured out a, quite a way of how to scan with this. Uh, with the software I'm using. I'm not saying it's not impossible, it's just I haven't figured that out. So, but basically this will allow you to listen listen to the, uh, a large radio spectrum of two-way radios, um, uh, other communications devices. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll go through this and we'll, we'll take a look at this and I'm learning this myself. So uh, I'll try it with my, uh, a few of my walkie-talkies to see if I can pick that up on this as well. So today we'll take a look okay, at that. Okay, so we'll do an unboxing. Let's see what this is. I think it's a, a software defined radio. And it is. It's in a Ziploc bag. I wonder if it's used. It doesn't seem like it's in a blister wrap or anything like that. So here's a little CD it comes with. Um, probably doesn't come with anything. Blaze HD TV player. Yeah. Uh, ain't gonna be running that in Linux. Here's the doggle. Uh, it has DVB, T, FM, and DAB, and SDR. So here's like the little in antenna input jack. And. Uh, there's this little thing here that will be probably lost within the next few hours, and then there's this thing here that plugs into the into the uh, into the computer, the USB port. Really, there's not a whole lot to it. It's just the one, the antenna jack, and that. So, it also comes with a little remote with an IR blast. Is there IR on this thing? I guess there is an IR IR uh, receiver on this. Anyway, I'm not really going to use it for IR, so this will be like another remote that just goes in a, a box of other remotes that I have. Uh, it comes with a little tiny, teeny weeny, itsy bitsy little antenna. So that, I don't know if it's magnetic or suction cup, I'm not sure. Here's a filing cabinet here. Yeah, it's magnetic. So a little magnetic antenna, so you can put this on the car of your roof and just don't drive over 50 kilometers per hour or it will blow off in the wind. Uh, so yeah, that's that's it. That's my SDR. Costs, uh, costs about, uh, uh, it's like over $20. Uh, and then I spent $5 for this uh, adapter, which is a a uh, coax cable to the connector that it will connect to. So I just connect can connect it to my over-the-air TV antenna because it'll be good, a good antenna to connect it to. And just to give you a you know, kind of a comparison, I got this connected to my aerial. This is my um, uh, Win TV, my hodgepodge, which I've reviewed in videos before. Just I can get ATSC with it. I just can't get. Um, um, can't seem to receive any radio st stations on this. So we'll, we'll hook this thing up and we'll see if it works. All right, so I've connected it to my coax from um, the uh, area. I think 160 might be better. And I connected the DVB-T to, the, to this thing here. And it's good. Yeah, 1.855. Anyway, so this is it here. It's working. Roger, Roger. And I got somebody talking on it here. I'm using the amateur bands. All right, the program I'm going to use is called GQRX. Now, with Linux Mint, for whatever reason, it doesn't have a launcher. Uh, it could just be the category of the program, so I always tend to have to type it in. But I'm going to launch that program now. So this is a free program you can get. I believe it's available in Linux, Windows, um, probably Apple products, some as well. But most of what I focus on is how to do stuff in Linux. 
So I'm going to go with this here. Now I can't full uh, full screen it, but we'll just go uh, with that there. Now I'm going to turn on the radio. So the first thing I'm going to go through over my settings. So this device is a real Realtek RL283 UHIDS. That's the one at the top, and that's the number that it's giving me. And uh, input rate. I don't know. These are just the default settings. If someone knows more about SDRs, like maybe they can um, tell me how to do this better in the comments. So I'm going to launch this thing now anyway. So right away, uh, you hit the power button there. You'll see the radio spectrum, and I have it on 149438. Uh, so this thing can cover quite a large perspective of the spectrum. So I am, I don't know if I have the audio on, I do. And I think I have the squelch turned up quite high. They have the squelch right here and yeah, I can hear the squelch in the background there. So I'd like to get some noise, some radio um, stuff going on here. So I like to find a frequency. So the interesting thing with this is I can actually go through the spectrum here and look at where there might be noise. So, so when I see a little dash right here where I see this little spark, uh, I can always like click on it and I can um, sort of look at it to see how it is as a carrier. And you'll just see the spectrum move along the, the lines here. So as I say, I'm, I'm up in the um, VHF range right now. This thing can also do the UHF and the FM. So there's something there. There's a little spike there. I'm going to move it toward the toward there. So I, I see that. So I think that's some sort of a digital um, thing. And there's something over here. I should move up the spectrum because of my area for FM radio. Did I really bring that down? There, so. There, I'm going to keep it down. So I can hear some music playing. So I'm, I, I've got a station. And uh, so, that, so yeah, so I'm seeing music on there. So I've got it on the station 98.99. Now I can just actually, it's probably actually transmitting there. And I just need to move the spectrum over here. There we go. So there, I've tuned a radio, an FM radio station, and I can go through several different FM radio stations with this um, software-defined radio. So this is cool. It's it's um, a software-defined radio working in Linux, pulling analog radio signal off the air, and uh, it's allowing me to to um, receive that. So that's working out pretty good. So what else can I show you on this? So that's that spectrum. Now I'll show you my settings. So I have it on F, uh, WMF wider stereo. Now for this station it's probably in stereo, so I could go stereo, but just uh, to eliminate that. Now if I go narrow FM, it'll just make a bunch of static. And I can go AM, or I can go lower sideband man that seems to have frozen there on lower sideband also I'm doing the uh, running OBS here too so that might have caused it to glitch okay I'll take a cut here and I'll show you what else I could do sometimes this stuff does not work as well when you're running OBS so I have a few devices here I have, my, I have a CB radio uh, walkie talkie uh, this is a Cobra unit and it just transmits on the citizen band uh, frequencies. So I'll try doing a break one nine with that. I'll put the squelch up for that. And I got my scanner going and I also have my FRS 2A radio. This is a Cobra as well. So there it picks it picks it up on the scanner. I have it programmed into the frequency that channel 22 is. Break one nine, break one nine for a radio check. Break one nine, break, break one nine. 
Breaker, breaker, one nine. Break one nine. So I'm talking, I was just doing a test there and I could to see how it would look. And all that blue line moving down the screen was me transmitting. So I'm on channel 19, which is frequency 27185. I believe that's what uh, Wikipedia said. Yeah, 185 for a CB. So that's cool. This uh, So this little doggle can receive as far down to the CB bands. Now, my antenna for receiving it, mind you, is my over-the-air uh, antenna. So it's it's my uh, antenna craft. I have it hooked right into my TV antenna. But um, I have used uh, my TV antenna to pick up CB radio before. So yeah, that was just a quick test to see that this thing can actually receive CB radio. Now, I might need, um, probably should have it on AM. How would that work better? Let's turn on that. AM radio. AM, AM radio. Hello. Sounds funny. AM radio. Somebody has responded to me on there. Must be lo someone local. Um, but yeah, I don't quite have it tuned up the best way. I don't know what would be the best if it'd be on best to be on narrow or lower side band. I'll turn the volume up. You can hear the lower side band. Upper side band. And I think it froze again because I'm here. I'm playing around with it on, on OBS Studio. Break twenty two. Break twenty two for a radio check. And here we have it over at um, FRS frequency channel twenty two. The only thing I'm noticing here with this is um, with this program GQRX the. Um, it's just like I have to move this little red thing off a little bit. It had about there, and then I just had to move that over there just so that I can tune in my voice. So I could put this uh, red right where the the wave lines are at the highest. Uh, so the actual frequency was four six two seven two five, but then it's off the frequency by a bit. Was reading on my SDR using this program, but I'm able to hear my voice back. And I'm able to squelch out the uh, all the all the noise. So the one thing I'm noticing about the the, the software and the software defined radio, I'm just gonna get off the mic there. <laughs> I was like talking in the mic on transmitting it. Is it is off by a little bit right there? Like the frequency seems to be off. I'm just gonna bring the audio down so those cracks in the audio don't kill my audio. So. I'm able to find things like I can go through the spectrum and then if I see something I can put this red dot and then hear it or this red line and move it along um, for example when I go through the amateur radio frequencies I can hear uh, I can see the lines moving in and tune in and hear people on the frequencies it's just not on the frequency it should be for example the other night when I was trying to hear the repeater I could hear people on the or on the amateur radio um, call channels, um, whatever you call them, where the, you know they're just a, for local uh, UHF. Uh, I couldn't uh, I couldn't actually get it on the exact frequency that it says it should be online. So that's one thing I'm finding with this program. These frequencies seem to be a little bit off. But uh, as I said, I'm just getting into this uh, software to find radio. Um, and I find that's with the FM frequencies as well. Uh, sometimes it's like I can, it sounds a little bit better if it's just off frequency a little bit. So maybe the uh, software defined radio is just off frequency a little bit. So I'm, as I said, I'm just learning this stuff with the software defined radio. But it's cool that I'm able to plug, play, and get it to work in Linux. Uh, that's one thing I'm very happy about. 
that I'm able to get it running on this free program, GQRX. Now, if other people who play around with software-defined radios, they know of a better program than this program, please let me know. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's a, this is neat. I'm going to be playing with this. Uh, it's a new toy to play with. It only costs $20. Uh, it was like $20 to get it shipped uh, to my house. So these things are really not that expensive. Robert Stanley has helped me... Um, um, with this stuff, he told, was able to help me with which uh, SDR to get, and it worked right out of the box at a Linux, in Linux. So I'm very happy about that, and I'm able to tune radio and listen to scanners and listen uh, listen to amateur radio frequencies and and listen to uh, two way radios. So it's kind of a neat it's a neat toy to have uh, for such a cheap price, and and also this it's not a very heavy duty program either like you could actually run this this software you could run on an older computer so if you have a computer that might not be the best for for um it might not be the best uh computer for doing modern day stuff like video and video games but uh if it's like say a five-year-old computer you could probably use a five-year-old computer as your as your radio because it's it, it's not a super um you don't need a super a, you don't need a, the fastest system in the world to run it and i i think you can get away with like an older computer as long as it has a usb 2 port you'll probably be fine so anyway that's my first look uh, i'm gonna learn more about this and i'll probably do another video on this eventually but uh, that's just my first look my unboxing of this software defined radio thanks for watching